Hello and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. This next video is all about memory. So memory, lots of pieces, lots of things to talk about. Let's jump right in. So the two areas of memory that I'm going to talk to you about today are verbal memory, information that is heard or received verbally, and visual information, information that is seen via maps, charts, graphs, or otherwise. So today we're going to talk about both of these different types of memory assessments and why they are an important part of the neuropsychological evaluation. Let's begin with verbal memory. Verbal memory encompasses learning and remembering newly gathered information that is heard verbally. This is certainly something that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis. If my husband comes down the stairs and says, honey, don't forget, I want you to get a gallon of milk on your way home from work. That is learning, that is memory, that is hopefully something I'm committing to memory, and that is something that I'm going to hope to remember on my way home from work. And it's something I have received verbally. Similarly, children learn and remember information that is lectured to them in classroom settings, in lecture halls, um, and in any other educational setting, a lot of the information that we gather is through verbal means. So there are two types of verbal memory that I want to talk about, contextual and non-contextual. Pretty easy to understand. Contextual verbal information is information that is provided in context. So that means things like information presented in a story or information presented as sort of a narrative, information that is gained with context around it. On the other hand, there is non-contextual memory. So that's rote learning, rote memorization, things like a child memorizing their spelling words or their words of the week. On the other side of things, there's visual memory, information that is learned and remembered through graphs, charts, maps, pictures, information that is presented visually that is learned and remembered that way. We can sort of think about visual learning and memory as being contextual or non-contextual as well, although it's not as clearly delineated when it comes to our types of testing. So let me give you an example of what I mean. If I was to memorize the 50 states of the United States, and I looked at a map that had all of the 50 states exactly where they're placed, I am learning those states in context, in comparison to where other states are located. So I can remember that Florida might be at the bottom, New Jersey is up by New York. I have a general reference point of the entire United States to better understand where individual pieces are located. In contrast, if I were just to be shown a picture of California or a picture of New Jersey, those are sort of out of context and therefore I'm memorizing somewhat rotely the uh, individual states themselves. I don't think that I'm going to need to spend a ton of time helping folks understand why it's important to understand memory in the context of a neuropsychological evaluation, but certainly learning and remembering information is crucial. In younger aged children, this is the way that we learn and understand our world. In older aged individuals, this is, you know, certainly a learned practice that we have had for decades but it also is somewhat of a signal to us if there is something that is going on in terms of neurological functioning. If we see changes to memory abilities over time, this is something that we're going to want to better understand in terms of the diverse neurological diseases that may or may not impact an individual in their older years. While I understand that in these videos I'm taking a very surface level approach to talking about things as big as memory. I can tell you that there are entire class series on memory and learning of new information, but I think it's important to sort of get a general gist and sort of dip our toes into all of these different domains of functioning before we dive really deeply into one particular domain or another. I know there's a lot of other information that I will share about memory in future videos about dementias, Alzheimer's, frontotemporal dementia, Parkinson's disease, MS. When I'm talking about these particular neurodegenerative diseases, that's where we're gonna take an even deeper dive into this domain. That said, memory, learning, recall, these are components of the neuropsychological evaluation that we dive deeply into. There are ways that we can assess if the information got into your brain at all and just needs a little help getting back out. There are ways that we can assess, do you even have a vague recollection that some sort of information was provided to you? Um, without kind of giving away the way that our testing works, I will say that 
learning and memory is a big component of the neuropsychological evaluation and it's something that we can help you better understand yourself.